So when, I, when I've studied organizational cultures, I've found that there are three different styles when it comes to how people interact. There are taking cultures where everybody says, I'm going to try to do what's best for me and get as much as possible from others and avoid giving back unless I have to. There are matching cultures where people say, I'm going to trade favors evenly, quid pro quo, I'll do something for you if you do something for me. And then there are giving cultures where people enjoy helping others, they share their knowledge freely, and they mentor, and they're constantly looking for ways to contribute to the team. And taker cultures are, are huge problems in organizations because anytime you have takers in your organization, they're essentially all trying to figure out how they can get ahead individually. And they will do what's best for them and not necessarily what's best for the team or the organization. So a lot of people think, oh, if we have you know, really competent takers, it's OK. It's not OK, actually, because the moment that their loyalty diverges from what's good for the larger group is the moment that you can no longer trust them. And in matching cultures, people care a lot about fairness. So exchanges tend to be much more balanced. You get a lot more learning. You have a lot more teaching happening. You have much more effective collaboration. And in really good giving cultures, um, what you get is a norm of generosity, where people are willing to help others even if they're not expecting something in return. And that allows for um, lots of creativity and innovation to happen um, because knowledge gets shared across different silos. It also promotes a culture in which people are truly committed to doing what's best for the larger group and serving the mission. And every leader I've ever worked with has, uh, has understood very clearly the cost of, of having a taker culture that becomes toxic very quickly. And we have, uh, we have about 35 years of evidence that givers add much more value to organizations than takers and matchers do. And if you can build a, a culture that involves giving and maybe some matching as well, you're much more likely than to, to create an organization where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. If you have an organization with a lot of takers, uh, I would probably quit your job. <laughs> no. I think that this is, this is often challenging. So the first thing that I think you, you need to do is make sure that in your hiring process, you're trying to screen out takers. Um, takers actually cause more damage in organizations um, than givers and matchers tend to contribute positively. So it's even more important to weed out takers than it is to bring in givers. And there are a whole bunch of selection practices that you can follow to identify takers. Second thing that really matters is to change your reward system. So one mistake that I see a lot of companies make is they say, we want people to collaborate, we want them to be helpful and generous, and then we only measure individual performance. And so it's really hard then to see who the givers are. What you want to do is, is instead of just measuring people's individual results, you want to measure their contributions to others. And when you start to reward and pay and promote people who not only succeed themselves but also help others succeed, pretty soon people realize, I don't have to be a taker around here in order to be successful. And I think that's less about creating incentives for people to be givers. It's just more about taking away the disincentives to be a giver. And then the third thing is you need a culture where it's safe for people to ask for help. Because the data show somewhere between 75 and 90% of all helping in organizations starts with a request. So there aren't a lot of people who are like, yeah, I'm kind of bored this month. How could I enrich your life? Right? Most giving starts when somebody asks, but a lot of people don't ask. They don't want to be vulnerable. They're afraid of embarrassing themselves. If they're givers, they don't like to burden others, and they may not even know where to turn. But if you never have anyone ask for help, you have a lot of frustrated givers in your organization who'd be happy to contribute if only they knew who could benefit and how. And so if you can model help seeking, if you can make it comfortable for people to make requests, you will actually see a lot more givers step up. Mm -hmm.